The exodus continues for Arizona football. What does this mean for the program? And talking a little bit of Brent Brennan identity. You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. The show is brought to you today by FanDuel. You put down five bucks and get $150 in free plays. If that bet hits, check it out at FanDuel. Okay, now we've got a lot to get to this show. First thing we are going to talk about, though, is Arizona football and what all of this means for, uh, what what all this, mo- all this noise means for. Now, the first thing is Wendell Moy is moving on. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Wendell Moy and exactly where uh, what his market is, because Wendell Moy was, he was on the verge of being an NFL player last year. He looked the part, a, he looked really, really good. Um, this year, he took a massive, massive regression. And I, when I say massive regression, I say a massive regression. He didn't look like the same player. You can say, well, you know, that's on the coaches, whatever the case may be. I don't really know. But um, you, uh, with, uh, with Wendell Moy, he just didn't look like the same guy. It'll be interesting to see, but we'll find out. Now, with uh, we've also got another person in the mix there, too. You got Jacob Manu. Jacob Manu is uh, moving on. This one hurts because, again, Jacob Manu wasn't that great this season either. But at the same time, I think you also got to know as well that with Jacob Manu, you also knew that, well... This was probably going to happen. Uh, this was probably going to happen at some point. The kid's got a lot of options. The kid's good, and generally, when a kid's got a lot of options and the kid's good, um, you're going to find him moving on. That one hurts though, because that's obviously Noah's guy. Not only is that Noah's guy, a uh, you you know, it just is what it is. That's a that's a tough loss, and I would expect more to. Uh, I would expect more to occur. There's going to be a lot more. I would I would think. Okay, but now let's uh, we'll keep you obviously up to date in that. But let's talk a little bit about uh, let's talk a little bit about right now where uh, uh, Arizona is with identity. You have got to get an identity this football season. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to go into the season with an identity. Last year, Arizona did not have an identity. And that was a massive, massive problem for this uh, team. Offensively, what's going on here? How do you not know that you know I've got some really, really good players here? Guess what? We're not gonna we're not gonna have any idea what we're going to do. And Brennan said that, oh, and this isn't me saying this. This isn't me being hard. Brennan said that week in and week out, he's like, you know, I just don't know what uh, I just don't know what uh, where we're at with this uh, with this team. That to me is the uh, that to me is the issue is that you just really didn't know where exactly this team was going to be. And you didn't have any quick hits. You just didn't have any idea with the offense. The fact that you got rid of Babers almost immediately kind of shows that, um, you know, that wasn't going to work. Now, I do give him credit to that extent. I definitely give him credit. But at the same time, I also think that uh, we're kind of at the point now, too, where it's like, um, you know, it's like acknowledging that you got an F. And you're like, okay, well, I'll give you credit for acknowledging it, but... We need to work on that going forward. You've got to hit the ball out of the park with this OC. You have no margin for error with this. Uh, you have no margin for error with this uh, this coming season. Um, you've got to get an OC that is easy to see what everybody what he wants, what his plan is, and everything. You can't just say, you know what, we're just going to try to wing it. And who knows what kind of roster you're going to have next season because you're going to have three new offensive linemen. I don't buy for a second. I don't buy for a second that uh, the argument that, well, you know, we just didn't have enough good players, this and that. You inherited three really good offensive linemen. You've got to be better. There's no other way around it. This team needed to be better, and it just was not better. That is a m- massive issue. Now, the other thing, too, that you've got to be able to do is you have got to be able to sell this community on some kind of a vision. That is the problem, is when you don't have a vision, when you don't have anything you go into these pressers and you just look insane. You don't look like you know what you're doing, and that was basically what it is. Even if you're, even if you go into a game, even if you go into a season and you're like, okay, well, this is uh, this is not going to be uh, good. Jed Fish, 
Jed Fish had a lousy first season, but you could always tell with Jed that there was a plan, that there was a there was an idea of what he wanted to do, and he was able to exact a lot of it. And that was a big part of what he did. He was able to do a lot of what he wanted to do. And you got to give him credit for that. Um, but with Brent Brennan, there was none of that. There was none of that. There was no idea that, you know what, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, – um, there was no idea that uh, – you're gonna, you know, we got a grander plan. It was just, you know, we got a good coaching staff. We got good players. We're just going to try to figure this out. That can't be the case. Then also, you look at what ASU is doing. You look at what ASU is doing with Kenny Dillingham. Copy that. It works. It's smart. Copy that. Watching him, he goes into every presser. He's advocating for his players. Not only is he advocating for his players, he's also the dude that you watch him and he's like, okay, um, you just kind of tell um, – um, you just can kind of just tell uh, that that's kind of the way it is at that point. And that's where it is. Now, the uh, I think with uh, when we come to uh, when we come to um, where this is at, where this is at with uh, Arizona, where this is at with Arizona, what do you want now from an off the field? Um, where do you want, you know, from an off the, on and off the field perspective? That's where it's going to be interesting, too. Get those players out in the community. They've got to be out in the community. Get yourself out in the community. And uh, that's kind of where, uh, that's kind of where it's, uh, that's kind of where this is all at. And, you know, just make it happen. I don't know what else to say. These are just very basic things. Also, on when you've got good players, you have got and you don't have a big margin for error you've got to be you've got to be where that you've got to be there now again it's um uh you've got to be there not only do you have to be there you also have to understand too that with uh um you know this community's hurt when you go into a presser you've got to go in there and you've got to have an idea of what you're going to say you've got to have an idea that say you know um i'm pissed too we're going to get this all figured out. And if you got players on their team that are good, you've got to be able to play them. I use this all the time. I use this analogy all the time. You got uh, you got Big Bill Norton on the roster. You got Deuce Davis on the roster. Don't run them off. Don't say, you know, to Deuce Davis, "Well, I don't know that you're really uh, that you're really, you know, big enough for this role or that uh, you know, you're not going to be good in the Big 10." Um You just can't do that. Bill Norton, he's good enough to play at Texas, but he's locked in a battle with Chuba May. That can't be the case. You have got to play the best players, and you can't tell them, you know, we're looking for kind of a different kind of realm. We're looking for kind of a different type of athlete, all of that stuff. You got to be able to uh, figure out the dynamics that are involved in all of that. Again, it's not difficult. You've just got to be able to make it work. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about what the expectations are for uh, for next season, and not only are we going to uh, not only are we going to uh, talk about the expectations for next season. What does success look like? Because I don't know. I think that's a great question. I don't know what success looks like. But first, Omaha Steaks, baby. Omaha Steaks. Nothing, nothing delivers uh, the comfort and joy like an unrivaled quality and taste of Omaha Steaks. From legendary steaks to mouthwatering desserts and more, save 50% off statewide for a limited time at omahasteaks.com. Uh, plus, our listeners get an extra $30 off with the promo code COLLEGE. That's 50% off at that point. Again, woohoo, $30 off, 50% off. Omaha Steaks and get an extra $30 off with promo code locked on. Minimum purchases may apply. Omaha Steaks is good. Anybody that's had an Omaha Steaks knows that it's legit. Check it out. Get 50% off at Omaha Steaks and an extra 30% off promo code college. Omaha Steaks, very, very good stuff. You're going to thank me later for it. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, let's talk about what they need to do. All right, we just talked about an identity. Now, you got money supposedly to be able to play with. And uh, listen, if uh, you got money. 
got money that you need to be able to play. You got money you need to be able to play with. You're going to have to bring in players. You got no margin for error and you got to show improvement. The first thing you got to do this season is you got to have an identity. You've got to show, you've got to show um, basically where we are at. And, uh, and uh, that's kind of where it's at. You've got to be, you've got to show where everything is at here when it comes to uh, um, Arizona from a passing perspective. You want, kids want to play in a high profile passing attack. They want to be able to see themselves in something where they can tell their buddies, hey man, I just caught for 125 years yards. They don't want to see what they saw this past season where you don't really know what's going on. You've got to get a quarterback in play that can make all of that occur. Uh, um and uh when it comes to uh when it comes to um where we're at now with uh you know with the uh, running attack, I like Kedrick Reesono. I think Kedrick Reesono is a pretty good player. You got to be physical there. You've got to put together an offensive line that is at least passable. If you don't put together an offensive line that is at least passable that um that is, uh, that's just what it is, you know, um, the, uh, you've got to be able to do that and you got to get wide receivers. Listen, you lose T-Mac, you, uh, you generally, um, you generally don't get, um, you generally don't get, uh, better, but if you can retain Chris Hunter, which you definitely need to do, and you got to go get some difference, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to go get some difference makers. You got to go get some players that can fit in there because again, I look at this and I think a hey, I think you need to win six games minimum. Um, and uh, not only do you need to win six games minim minimum, you need to be basically you need to be in there and say you need to be in there and say that um, that would be a you, you just got to say you know that's what you got to do. But you got to get linemen, you got to get wide receiver, you basically got to get everything. Like I said, I like Reesono, but you got to be able to get basically everything. Then on the defensive side, I'm. Just <laughs> Excuse me. I'm assuming Danny Gonzalez is going to be the defensive coordinator. When you talk with people at ASU, they actually don't have bad things to say about Danny Gonzalez. So that is um, that is uh, <coughs> excuse me. That is uh, that's something that uh, it'll be interesting to see how that does play out. But watching them, you also do know that this is going to be a roster. This is going to be a team that's going to be totally different. Uh, your linemen, Trey Smiths, okay, whatever. Um, you got to get good defensive tackles. I like Isaiah Johnson. Um, and uh, not only do I like Isaiah Johnson, I also like uh, I also like on the uh, on the edges. I think there's some players that you can maybe work with a little bit, but you got to get difference makers. Trey Smith, the only dude coming back that should be guaranteed to start. Oh, well, Isaiah Johnson too. But the problem with Isaiah Johnson is that he is hurt all the time. And that generally does not work well for football. Okay, now... At the at uh, the linebacker level, then obviously Jacob Manu's gone. You're probably going to try to get back Tay Brown, but who knows? You might not get back Tay Brown, and that's going to be a little bit of an issue if you don't get back uh, Tay Brown. Um, but I would imagine you do. Um, then in the secondary, you know, can you who can you retain? And that's going to be interesting to see who you can retain. You got a Keenan back there. He's got a good reputation. With all these players, but at the same time, you know, could trade Stukes. Uh, he could, he's got options. Gunnar Maldonado is going to have options. Dalton Johnson is going to have options. You got to look at it and say that that's going, um, and that uh, that's going to be a uh, that's just going to be the way that it is. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's kind of where you're at then with this team. You're going to have to just get better. You're just going to have to get better players across the board, and that's where I'm concerned. Is generally the players you're losing. I generally just don't think you get better by losing a T Mac, a Jonas Savanea, Wendell Moy, a Josh Baker, a you know in the secondary, a uh, um, you know a possibly a Takario Davis, a Jacob Manu, et cetera, et cetera. You generally just don't get better losing those type of players, and that is probably what is going to happen. And Again, what does success look like? We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But first, FanDuel, FanDuel, y'all know what the deal is. Go to FanDuel. Check it out. FanDuel.com, ladies and gentlemen. FanDuel.com. 
Com. All right, you can put down five bucks and you get $150 in free plays if that bet hits. But you got to be a new customer and you got to win. Very, very clear about that. So check it out at FanDuel again. You got the NFL, you got the NBA, you got college basketball, you got uh, college football playoffs coming up. If you got an idea that something might be pretty good, you might want to say, you know what, I'm going to put a little bit of skin in the game here. I'm going to go to FanDuel.com and I am going to check that out. This is the best time of the year to bet. Come on, the best sports are here. Not only are the best sports here you also know at this time too that you also know at this time too that um that's just kind of where it is fanduel check it out at fanduel.com thanks for keeping it locked on wildcats and making this your first listen of the day and i am mike luke all right now let's talk a little bit about uh now, let's talk a little bit about now the staff and where you are going forward then. It's going to be up to them. I don't have much faith that they understand really what's going on here um, because everything has been a ba massive miscalculation from day one, from not having an identity, from not uh, being involved in the community, from from not understanding press conferences, from not understanding just a lot of different things. How did How did this all get here? How are you on and off the field just kind of looking like you just don't know exactly what's going on? These are all things that I just don't know how we are at this stage. And that to me is the problem is how did we get to this point? How are we at this stage? Because this kind of stuff is just unacceptable. There's really no other way around it. This kind of stuff is just unacceptable. But they got another year. They've got more money. And they've said that, you know, from the beginning, it would be uh, um, and uh they're like, well, you know, we'll find out. So that's where it's going to be fascinating to see. What can they bring in? Who's going to be here? Here's the other question, too, I think, when it comes to an offensive coordinator is, this could be a sinking ship. At what point, then, do you want to be tied to this sinking ship? Because, you know, if you come in here and you're leaving a, a nice, cushy job and you come in here and it doesn't work, what are you going to do from there? But it still is a power four position. It still is a job that's offering a million dollars. So there's going to be some people that are going to be into it for sure. But I just don't know exactly who uh, who those who those people are. That's where it's going to be interesting for me. So we will find that one out. Also, the uh, a big part of this too is, you know, you're going to have to something. You're going to have to be very very resourceful in the portal. You're going to have to be able to find players that you know. Maybe didn't, and Jed was great at this, finding players that you generally don't think super highly of that turn out to be really, really good players. Big example of that is, you know, somebody like Jed, a Tanner McLaughlin, found an NFL tight end, and the dude's from Southern Utah. He was able to get a Taylor Upshaw that was kind of an afterthought at two different schools. He was able to find a CO. He was able to find a DJ Williams. He was able to find guys. So you're going to have to find guys that are not necessarily long on productivity, but also long on potential. That's where it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how can he do that? Can he get that? I don't know. Uh, again, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, I don't have a lot of faith in that, but we're going to find out. It's But my big thing, though, for him this coming year is you. I've got to know what you want to do on the offensive side of the football. I've got to know what kind of style you want to run, what you want to do, all of that. And then on the secondary, or excuse me, on the defensive side of the football, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to, uh, you know, are you looking to get bigger because you kind of ran off some big dudes? Are you looking to uh, be more physical? What are you trying to do? That is the first thing. You just got to tell me what are you trying to do? And if I know what you're trying to do, I can go from there. But like we talked about, you don't have any margin for error. After this past season, you don't have any margin for error. And you've got to, uh, you know, you got you got to be able to, uh, you got to be able to win. And again, nobody's expecting you to win 10 games, but you better show an identity and you better show an identity early. If you don't show an identity, um, nobody's going to support you in any of this stuff. So that's where it's going to be fascinating to watch how all of this does play out. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk, obviously, more about this. You got the Arizona offensive coordinator uh, search coming up here. What is the deal with that? What can Arizona get in that regard? Not only uh, what can Arizona get in that regard, but again, what is that identity going to be going forward? We're going to find all of that out because, again, you don't got a margin for error here, man. You've got to be able to. Uh, you got to be able to do this and off the field. I don't know at this point because it's just going to seem forced. It's just going to seem rehearsed. 
we'll find out. But, you know, it's not good. None of it's good right now. And there's really another other way to put it. But it also behooves all of us for Arizona football to be good. So we should be rooting for a good outcome. I just don't necessarily have a ton of faith in that. But on that note, very much appreciate you all making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. Bear down. Back the A, and we'll be back with you tomorrow, hopefully talking some offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator news.